Any questions? I do have a question. Yep. So you were saying in regards to the face, mm -hmm. you were doing a 10 pretty much width. And mm -hmm. it seems like this dog has a very correct lip. She yes. has a very full lip. Yes. Now, when I took a Jody Murphy class, she wanted everybody to do lips with a thought. Yeah, I, you know, again, that's another preference thing. It and really like I was saying, just, I think it's, it's also kind of dependent upon the dog. Yeah. And if she, and yeah, and preference. If she wanted her dogs to look like they had much right. more going on here. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And when I was in school, they said about a seven reverse mm -hmm. on the muzzle. Yeah, they, a they seven reverse is basically like, the same as a ten forward. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You, you know, you get in that range and then you have to adjust it, you know, based on the dog that you're working on. Um, I, I've had breeders tell me that they do, you know, a 15 uh, reverse on the tops of the ears. Um, I do that on the, the one I use for that Suburban trim on my videos. He grows, if, if, if he goes six weeks, he can't see. Yeah. He grows that much hair in his face. He's, his tops of his ears and everything and make it really short. Is this a dark colored dog? Uh, yes, okay. it's a black. Yeah, because I figured a, a black would hold like a, a tan a little better and not yes. be like if you're doing a buff and you see pink skin. You can see through. the pink skin. Yeah, you can see the white skin if you do it on her. Um, so that's why I kind of like the, the tint forward. You want to feel the velvety. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually in the breed standard too. There's something about velvety ears or something. I don't know, I'm not certain. I don't keep up with the standards other than the structure and what I'm supposed to do with the haircut. Um, but you can see if you were to do that in reverse, you could see that white skin underneath. So I like it to, you know, I don't like to see that white skin like that, depending. And some dogs have thicker ear hair and you can do that and you don't see skin. So really, you know, you have to adjust it based on, you know, is, is this a pet? Is this a show dog? Are we showing it tomorrow? Am I doing it in grooming competition and I don't want to see that? Um, or am I going to a show and I can do it this week because it'll be gone by the time we get to the show next Saturday? Because it'll fill in just enough that it won't, you know, then you won't have to mess with it. But a lot of times they have gone to going with a seven in reverse, but I tend not to I hope this doesn't sound offensive. I tend not to try to teach that to groomers in particular because they all panic. Because the seven has wide teeth. So they either panic or they don't panic. And if they don't panic, they slice things off. You know, you can get a lip flu in a seven super easy. So I tend not to teach that, you know, uh, on purpose, particularly to new groomers. Because um, they, they either worry because they've never used a seven on a face before or they don't and then you end up with somebody, you know, cut. Because they push down too hard and they slide that lip glue right up in there and it's done deal. So this is basically how I would do this dog for grooming competition in that order. And then I would come back when I'm done with all of this and blending in my clipper work and all of that. And I would keep combing this and pulling out all these hairs in this underline to get it fixed right. I, I spend probably 45 minutes after I've done all of this messing with all of this hair on the bottom. fixing the bevels, combing them out again, pulling off more hair. Any other products? Um, I really don't with these guys. Um, a lot of times what you'll see is, you know, sometimes they'll use a little bit of chalk or spray on this to make it lay down. Or, or if I did get, you know, like if I had this cowlick going on, I would then at the same time put my little bit of black hair spray on there and pat it down and let it dry so that's not sticking out. Um, you can point it out to your certifier and say, hey, you know, it's got a, a cowlick there, we're gonna cover it up. 
Um, and, and as they see it first, and then they know you didn't make a bald spot on purpose. Um, so if it doesn't go away, then I will, I'll point that out to uh, my judge and let them know that she has that cowlick there. And then I would come back with my little bit of black hairspray and cover it up so that when I'm stacking her and they see it, it's not their eye isn't drawn to that little spot. I used no. to do that with my schnauzer too. And on the jacket, the shine is mostly from the carding, not any yeah. shine spray or? Nope. No. No. Bathing condition. The, um, here that you cart it off, that grayish mm -hmm. color, that's yep. the oils and that kind yep. of stuff. Like it spreads it around. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so I was wondering the, when you were doing that, it got so shiny, and then I saw the gray kind of coloration. Yeah, you're dropping. pulling out the dead coat, taking off the stuff that's making it look duller, and then you're also spreading around the natural oils from the skin and anything that's on your hands, and it just comes up shiny. If it's healthy coat, it just comes up shiny. You can start seeing it happen. That's how you do that. <laughs> I watched a competitor doing it one time and I was like, what are you doing to that dog? Oh, got it. That's awesome. <laughs> and these guys that are used to being groomed so much are very tolerant of it. Even if she's never had it done before, she's still like, okay, whatever. make some stand on those feet so you can trim around them and they're not going to go anywhere. And that helps you get your little shape in the front. You're kind of going up a little bit right there. Looking at it from every little angle after you cut your bevels in, you get all those other little straight hairs. And you always have to stretch them out and stack them because particularly this here. I was telling you you don't want it laying on the ground. Sometimes if you stack them and you've already trimmed it, now all of a sudden it's laying on the ground. So you have to come back. Just pull their tail a little bit and make them do that with their back legs and it'll show you if it's laying on the ground or not. apply this to everyday grooming. Make it shorter. Take a clipper comb to the skirt and the legs, a big long one. Um, do the suburban trim where you take off the whole body and leave the legs just a little bit longer. Um, you can do like an Asian fusion thing. Just shave off all of this. Take a 10 blade to this and then you've just got the big poofy legs depending on your customer. 
Some of them will keep up with just legs. That's much more doable than all this stuff because this stuff rubs underneath and this is where all the matting happens. Um, do your ears correctly, just make them a little shorter. Her ear leather is actually right here. So, you know, if they complain about it getting in the food, you can trim the front off and trim it right up and next to the ear leather, but it still looks like they've got ear hair. So they're less likely to get it in. Um, I, <laughs> I used to have a client that had um, like buff, that's the, that's the word cockroaches. She had two buff cockers and they grew all of this like weird Fu Manchu stuff and it was really stringy and she made me leave it, like their whole head. So they had all of this, they looked like Gallagher. They had like hair everywhere on top of their head. They had all this stuff and I'm like, what? She's like, I just like it. Shaved all the rest of seven blade. <laughs> and leave the weird head. So I did it. All right. Well, it makes her happy, whatever. You know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Um, but you can, you can modify this, um, you know, if you, if you uh, check my YouTube channel, there's actually a dual um, section on doing, you know, suburban trim. And then there's also, uh, last time I did the, sh the show video on one of her dogs, I also broke it down into showing you how to do the pet trims because she was going home naked anyway. So I took the opportunity to show some of the pet trims. So I think it says Cocker Asian Fusion. Um, it was me doing a whole bunch of pet trims on a dog like that had this much coat, but showing you the different variations that you could do um, to make it more pet friendly. And, and then I went on into the Asian Fusion thing where I just gave her some boots and the rest of her was shaved. It was really cute. She looked like Clydesdale. Um, so feel free to, you know, peruse the video if you're interested in seeing, you know, what you can do with more kind of pet type stuff. Um, but this, this is what they're supposed to look like. <coughs> I don't recall. I think I might have gotten one in my salon over the years that the lady was able to keep up with it. Um, so it does happen. And if it does happen to you, We'll know what to do. Or you can certify with one. Or we can find you a Springer or an English Cocker instead. Pet Cockers for easy maintenance trims, I have a tendency to put in Schnauzer cuts. Yeah. I, I don't ever dare say that to a Cocker owner, but right. those who are saying like, oh right. yeah, I want it to look like a Cocker. Right. But you I pull I it all the way the down. Uh, yep. yep. Take so off just the back of the back it leg. Like it's got. Yep. Just leave a little bit so that but it my notes like always say schnauzer pattern on the cock. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I know I'm, I do, I'm not doing I do that with poodles too. Yep. Yep. I do that with poodles too. I take off their whole body and then I take off the whole rear angulation with whatever I do on the body and then I leave the legs just a little bit longer and I take a clipper comb to them. Yep. Um, that, that's the most popular trim that I have on my poodles, including ones that came from me because it's easy to keep up with, but it still looks cute and poodly and their legs don't look like sticks. Yeah. Um, she's just, just like trying to go to sleep. Are you <laughs> tired, Ducky? You are a good girl. You did so well. Yes. I'm gonna tell your mommy you're an angel. You did very good for your first time. Yes, you did. You're a good girl. All right, everybody, let's break for lunch. Thank you.